Welcome to the Mechanical Room. The mechanical, 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 mechanical. A Centrotherm production focusing on all things in and around the HVAC industry. And now, your hosts, Michael Sakaris and Matthew Price. to the April edition of the podcast, the Mechanical Room podcast. We've got quite a show lined up today. we got one of my heroes out there because he's cool, because he's a Viking, love Vikings. So welcome to our April edition of the Mechanical Room. Uh, Matthew, what are, you, what are we doing today? So, of course, we're going to do show five. We've got uh, the first Air Excellence feature for the segment here. So that's pretty pr pretty exciting. We're gonna we're gonna move away from the mechanical room and move towards uh, just full house ventilation with, okay. with a, a wonderful series of photos posted out of British Columbia. And uh, if you're watching this now, you can see that we record this out of order because I did not know where the geography was. I knew this time. <laughs> he did, he did. <laughs> or a change. So, so uh, yes, and then we're gonna talk to Colton, uh, the Viking pipefitter who, um, you know, I mean, he's a real fascinating guy. He makes incredible content up out of Vega's Denver office. He's the trainer and uh, and also like the Instagram guy. Um, and man, he's hilarious. He's super well informed. Uh, he know, you know, he know, better for the majority of his life. Yeah, he, he knows his stuff and he is really blazing a new trail on social media. So uh, really, really exciting interview um, and, you know, a lot, to, a lot to be learned from him. Really inspiring guy, so we look forward to doing that too. So let's roll right into show us your pipe. Here we come. Welcome back, everybody. Is that? of the show again it is the show us your pipe segment of the show and we're kind of switching it up this month it is not an influ installation it is an air excellent are you breathing some excellent I'm, air I'm, I'm breathing in breathing some excellent air so matthew please show us the deal who is the winner and why are they the winner and i love the the little uh little rings make sure you put that picture up. i absolutely will i absolutely will so RNJ Mechanical. Uh, they do heating, plumbing, air conditioning, boilers, heat pumps, furnaces, the whole nine yards. And in this case, the HRV with the glorious green air excellent system. And uh, RNJ Mechanical is treating us to some, uh, some, some looks at framing in the ventilation system here. Uh, unlike in a flu, which is, you know, you usually you put the, the water heater comes in after the house, more or less built, you know, appliances, that kind of stuff come in, uh, you know, as, you know, as the house is being built. But right now we're looking at the walls that are unframed and the ventilation system going through them and being mounted inside the joust, uh, the joists and the, the registers coming down to provide that fresh air to the rooms and extract the stale air uh, back to the appliance. So, Air Excellent is, you know, one of the other systems that we sell. Uh, it's not the UL listed blue gas vent system stuff. It is air management and RNJ Mechanical. Uh, the I believe the owner and operator his name is Rob Quizak. Quizak, Quizak. It's a nice Polish name. Uh, K W I C Z A K. I want to say Rob Quizak. Probably more simple than than I, than I think. But there's a whole soup of consonants there, like a good Polish name would have. Right. So RNJ Mechanical uh, installing some really, really nice air excellent uh, air, air management systems in their in their house. And um, I really like this, this photo that I'm showing right now. It's the van, but it's all of the gear laid out, ready to go in. It's the air foam. It's the D box. 
it is the the coils that uh, you know kind of spaghetti it's, it's kind the of getting, getting the material ready for the install yeah and then some of his subsequent uh photo the, the material being framed into the house and ultimately even the restrictor rings kind of laid out as he's planning on how he's going to efficiently uh properly balance the air perfectly balance the air in the house it was just a, a, a really nice uh, post and uh, thank you for sharing it with us. yeah and this this is the, the, the photo that you're talking about I'm, I'm going to show right right now it's a beautiful photo as he looks out over this i want that house over this way. lake yes, and uh he did use the phrase cutting biscuits for the restrictor rings which i've never heard before but i'm gonna have to try to remember that because it's kind of hilarious as you can see uh, you know if, if you look at this this photo closely you can see at the bottom it's the it's the layout most likely done by the intrepid, the code queen, Mallory Epstein herself, uh, laying out the the accurate runs of this air management system. And then, of course, Rob sitting there with his utility knife, uh, configuring the restrictor ring such that there can be accurate airflow and return to each room of the house. And, of course, this photo is just well done. I mean, it's beautiful over the this wood, you know, this... Lake BC, lakescape so or something like that. You know, close to Vancouver, it's, or one of the islands. Indeed. Um, so where are they say they're from? Uh, I'm not sure. He included in, in Shush Shush Swap. Let me Google that real fast. Where the heck are we? I, I, it's obviously as you're Google it. We want to thank you for using Air Excellent and thank you for posting this. Oh my God, it's Shush Swap Lake, which is of course in BC. So you are correct. Um, looks like uh, northeast of Kamloops, so kind of far away from the, oh, from the main city, but man, like a home away from home right there in the beautiful, pristine lake uh, where, of course, the air is fresh outside and you want the air to be fresh inside as well. So thank you so much to Rob for showing us your vent system pipes, I mean, your, uh, your air distribution pipes uh, here on the mechanical room. Uh, we'll be right back with Holton, the, the Viking pipe fitter. Welcome back to the Mechanical Room, the April episode, and we have a very special guest today, Colton Henkowski, Vega Technical Training Consultant, and maybe more important, content creator. The uh, the amazing stuff that comes off of your Instagram is really, really worth a look, and we thank you for being here. A little bit more about Colton. He's based in the Colorado Seminar, Seminar Center in uh, for Vega, of course, and he trains contractors, engineers, wholesale partners, through in-person and online workshops. During those workshops, he teaches current and potential press users a variety of skills related to properly using Vega products in plumbing and HVAC applications. He is also the host of Vega's monthly Instagram live stream, which I have watched, Tech Talk Live, and he's also known for educational and comedic content on IG, where you can follow his adventures at Viking underscore Hype Fitter. Prior to joining Vega, in 2019, he was a pipe fitter for UA Local 208, and he worked his way up from apprentice to foreman to braconeer. I'm hoping I'm pronouncing that correctly. I'm not sure what that is. Maybe we'll have to address what a braconeer is. He still holds current gas fitter, HVAC technician, and steam fitter license. We welcome Colton to the mechanical room. Michael, please say hello. You're obviously decked out in Vegas swag here. Please say hello to our guest. Uh, hey there, Colton. How are you, man? Really good, really good. Thanks for having me on, y'all. I really appreciate the time, and I appreciate being here. That's a really cool intro that uh, someone else wrote for me. So somebody got it all nailed down, figured out a whole lot about me. So that's pretty spot on to what what I've done in my career for sure. So it's pretty cool to have people to do that stuff for you. But as Matthew uh, intonated, what is a braconeer? I have no clue. Yeah, so so it, in in Burkonier, so Burkonier Plumbing and Heating was the company that I worked for. So when you're a UA tradesman, you work for you know your local union hall, and then you basically get hired out to different companies. So Burkonier was the company that I worked at for a shoot most of my career. I started another company, but I was kind of a lifer at Burkonier for those last fifteen years. Okay, so I'm just a dumbass, and I read it wrong. It said <laughs> I'm reading this. This is Apprentice to Foreman Two. Bracagne or whatever. I thought that was like a, you know, a level of Sith Lord, perhaps, uh, you know, in the gas fitters license, you know, hierarchy. But no, that's the company. They are also in Colorado. Yeah, yeah. So they're based in Colorado. Shoot, Bracagne has been around almost as long as Vega. So the guy who started Bracagne actually helped build the Empire State 
uh, building as a pipe fitter. So he was part of that mechanical crew. And then he came to Colorado and started his own company. So a really cool company to be a part of, that's for sure. It's very interesting. So the other question that I had uh, that was going to be my first question, I'm a Vikings fan, Minnesota Vikings fan. Where does the whole Viking pipe fitter uh, name come from? Yeah, so I, I do have love for the Vikings. I am a Denver native, though. I'm one of the few Denverites who's actually born and raised in Denver, Colorado. So I'm a Broncos fan through and through. I love the Broncos. The Viking thing came through when I first started the Instagram shoot. I, it's only been less than a year now. Um, I used to have a big, long Viking braid, and my hair was cut like a Viking. That's my heritage. That's where I came from. So I started out as the Vega Viking, and we kind of decided we should probably split our names up so not everything I do is tied to Vega, and that's when I became the Viking pipe fitter, actually. I do believe you have a pretty big Viking tattoo on your arm over there. Is that right? Yeah, I've got, it's pretty good. Yeah, I've got Odin on the one arm, so he's like, you know, the Viking god. And then I actually have him on the other arm, too, kind of when he's more in, like, his wizard state role, and he's not, like, an actual, uh, you know, god. Because before he did all that kind of stuff, you know, he wandered, and that's where he found all his wisdom and whatnot. So I love the Viking stuff, but I kind of love what comes with it, too. So is it, like, something that I truly believe in? Not really, but I do love the basis of where all that kind of information and stuff comes from. So uh, how many hours in the tattoo chair you think you got? I think if I, if I put it all together, probably 60 hours or more. I've got uh, most of my backs done. Both of my arms are mostly sleeved out. And I pretty much have my tattoo guy on retainer. So every about three to four weeks, I go in there and we put a new tattoo on. I had one two days ago, so I got another brand new tattoo on my hand. So I just kind of continue to do that because it's hard to find good tattoo guys. So I just keep them lined up as much as I can so I don't lose them and I don't lose those spots. Do you have any uh, pro press or plumbing themed art on you? I don't know. So um, I did get a lot of like at the trade shows, people were like, you don't have like a pipe wrench or something on you. I don't know if I'll ever put that on me. When my younger days, I was into that. Um, and it is definitely a huge part of who I am, but it feels like I don't want to put my body and make it like an advertisement. You know, as soon as you do that, it's more of an advertisement instead of something that means something to me. So I don't think I'll ever play that game. Nothing against guys who do that. But I think they're super cool. So Matt, Matthew's got a uh, in a flu tattoo on his back, full back in a flu tattoo. It's a little common vent system. I'm, uh, you know, rack mounting. It's it's uh, it's got all, it's got all the gas lines and everything as well. So I'm hitting on all the uh, all the parallel manufacturers. There's some valves on there. There's of course the pro press stuff as well. Expansion tank. My whole back. No. Uh, the joke actually around the office, though, is so we, there's a bunch of heavily tattooed people in this office, myself included. And the joke that we have is eventually getting an elbow on your elbow. I like that across the elbow. <laughs> yeah. So that's uh, that is the fun team building exercise that I think we uh, we always we, we kick around and I'm not opposed to it. So I have a ton of tattoos and not all of them have much meaning. Some of them are just silly nonsense, too. So like an elbow on my elbow. Something I'm considering. So you're not. Well, they, yeah, and I mean, I think every <laughs> I would tattoo cons- doesn't have meaning when you have a lot of them. Sooner or later, you're getting tattoos because they look cool and because you want it, not because it's technically meaningful or whatever. I always said that if somebody wants me to get a tattoo, I'll do a rigid pipe wrench tattoo, but you better believe that I'm going to get paid for it. I'm not getting that put on me. Like, if you're getting a lifetime advertisement on my arm, like, I need some kind of funds back <laughs> for that. That seems completely reasonable. I wish, uh, you know, the estate of Frank Zappa and the Who would would, pay, would give me, uh, you know, residuals based on my my love of their art and their music. That's all my stuff. Is uh, I'm a musician. I have all kinds of music related tattoos, um, up and down me. You know, so, uh, been trying to keep talk this guy into a full Iron Maiden back piece. Uh, I, I love Iron Maiden, but not enough to get a full back piece. Let me tell you. <laughs> well, do you have any tattoos? You have some tattoos, right? Or do you not I have, have any? Nothing. I am. Well, you know, as white, like my golfer's tan, I have no tattoos, not a single one. You know what's cool about that, though? Now you're in the you're in the minority. So whereas tattoos I'm used to make you different and cool, now people who don't have tattoos are the ones who are different and cool. So you're, you're winning that. And my daughter, who Matthew knows, you know, she's watching all these tattoo shows on, like, uh, tattoo cover-up and, you know, all this stuff. And I'm like, it's inevitable she's going to get one. They're everywhere. They're, and they're, they're destigmatized as well. So, I mean, you know, nowadays it's not the same sort of like, you know, what are you, some sort of like pirate or ruffian or something like that. There's all kinds of, you know, and then, of course, you must be, as part of being in the culture, you're aware of like the trends of stuff, geometric tattoos and 
you know, I mean, there's always obviously homages to people, your kids, your your grandparents, all that kind of stuff. I mean, everything in between now. Uh, and it's really all walks of life that, that get them, not just, you know, sailors, port to port, you know, that kind of thing. So, I mean, I personally love it. I think a lot more people would have it if uh, they didn't hurt like hell. Um, I'm always fascinated by people who's tell, who are like, I love getting the, the feeling of getting tattooed. I'm like, you're a liar and you're, you're full, you know, you're, you're full of shit because, man, they are excruciating from start to finish. You are, you are who are obfuscating the, the, the truth here, they are painful as hell. Well, for sure. And, you know, there's, I, I'll admit everything about myself. I'm a very truthful person. Most of my tattoos I got without any kind of help or anything. Probably my last two or three, I found this tattoo numbing cream. It basically has lidocaine in it. So you put it on like an hour and a half before the tattoo, and it kind of numbs the area. It doesn't not hurt at all, but it kind of gives you a good, like, hour and a half, two hours where you don't even feel it. So... I don't care. Um, I've definitely been called all kinds of names by the tattoo guys when I have it. And I'm like, whatever, dude, I'm not in here to like go through the pain. I just want the tattoo. Where's the most painful one you got? Um, so I've got one on my rib cage right here. Um, it says shake it off and step up. It's just, you know, kind of like one of those motivation things. Like life's going to suck. We shake it off and keep moving forward. Um, and that was probably the worst one. I got that on my 18th like right when i was 18 and it was the day after new year so i was hung over dehydrated and it was all over my ribs and the guy was kind of an experience so that was probably the most painful one yeah i have both my ribs done as well and i would always say that that is the, the one of them is all color it's pretty bulky and it was excruciating 10 out of 10 pain pretty much from start to finish yeah so. i was laughing my girlfriend my girlfriend wife now um at the time I was like squeezing her hand. It's like I was going through pregnancy birth or something like that. Cause I was clenching her hand and the guy's like, you need to breathe. It's going to be hard if you don't breathe. I'm like, dude, you're stabbed with me with needles in my ribs. Like I'm not going to be able to breathe through this and feel all right. Oh my God. You know, you know what's hilarious with Mr. Price here and tattoos. He always loves to schedule them in the middle of a conference call. So he can take the conference call while sitting in the chair, getting the tattoo. He gets a big kick out of that for some reason. I well, don't know why. The artist gets a kick out. Is that what it is? Okay. So he, he thinks it's hilarious. I'm sitting there like, oh, I, I took a phone call last uh, from our, my print vendor, right? There was a little bit of a delivery mishap going on. So I'm like talking to the loading dock guy and I'm talking to my print vendor at the same time while I'm like, the back of my leg is getting tattooed and it's pretty sensitive. And uh, you know, he's just laughing because I'm, you know, conducting business while, while it's occurring. I'm sure you've done the same thing. Oh, yeah, it's, it's a way to get paid while you get tattooed, right? So you gotta, <laughs> you're, you're technically not off the clock, right? So you can still get paid while you're doing it. Absolutely. So we have pretty liberal, you know, PTO here at Central Jersey. So that's the, that's the difference. Paid tattoos off, right? So, all right, let's shift gears a little bit. Tell us about the room you're in. We were talking about this a little bit before we were on the air here. It looks like what you set up at your own house for your own media purposes and whatnot, but clearly... Vega believes in the setting up the, the setting so that you have a good studio and backdrop for all of the great content and stuff that you do. You very often appear directly in front of these neon lights when you do the live stuff or when you do the unboxing that we just had, we talked about a little bit as well. So just talk a little bit about, uh, you know, Vega's belief in, in what you do and what you do on social media that goes beyond Vega. Absolutely. So where this all really started was we have a dedication to training. So Vega has been around for over 120 years. We've had a training center in Vega uh, in our Germany location since the beginning. So we want everyone to know how to put together what we're telling them to use um, so they actually get the best capabilities. That kind of slowly transformed when they came into the U.S. We had one in Nashua. We still have the Nashua Seminar Center, which is dedicated to training. Um, so there's workshops there. Uh, then we decided that Nashua was a little bit too small for our headquarters. So they built one here in Colorado. My company actually did all the HVAC mechanical plumbing in these buildings. And that's kind of how I found my way to Vega. But really, it's just a training center. So there's classrooms, there's a lunch room, there's an interactive learning center. And then this is one of the workshops where we do like live hands on stuff. Boom, you talked about we go into COVID. Uh, we ramp up into that COVID and we had to take everything digital. So in the beginning, it really was just my garage. So they sent us all home. We set up cameras, video, and we could do live training sessions. And it was literally my garage. I moved the car out on the street. All the tools and stuff got moved in and I did trainings for my garage. They finally let us come back to the seminar centers and now I've been working out of the shop. 
Now this was always technically, it's just a training shop. That's what it was for. And then uh, basically out of jealousy, we had other trainers. One of the other trainers uh, won an award. And I just feel like any award that is won should probably be my award. And I kind of asked some questions and I was like, well, how did he or she get that? Why did that happen? And they're like, well, they're also on social media and they have a social media platform that kind of pushes out vegan. And I was like, cool, I'm gonna start social media. So I started my Instagram and then it kind of just grew into this where I got it, got likes, got a larger following and it kind of turned into something a little bit bigger than I thought it was going to, obviously. I thought it was just gonna be some dude uh, doing pipe fitting stuff on camera, but people seem to love it. And now we just kind of use this for that. And then also what I call my real job. I'm actually a trainer. I train people, I teach them how to be pipe fitters, plumbers, how to use our products. That's the core focus of my job. And then outside of that is the whole Instagram, social media stuff. And it's been pretty cool because now I'm tied into marketing and stuff and not inside the company. So I've gotten to kind of form my role and meld my role into a couple of different places, which is obviously is, super Is fun. your social media part of your job? You know, and you put out a lot of content. Is that formally part of your responsibility or is that something that we do the mechanical room? It's not in our job description. We do it because we believe in it. We have a good time doing it. And that's why we do it. Is it formally part of what you do? Or is it just like us with, with our podcast? You just do it because you like it. You know, up until about two days ago, it was just something I liked doing and like doing for the community and also happened to benefit uh, Viga. Um, but as of two days ago, we kind of got to restructure and we set our goals for the year and stuff. And me creating content and doing stuff for our different social platforms is actually now one of my goals. So actually it is part of Viga. It is part of my actual role. And, you know, hopefully I can just keep moving in that direction and just kind of expand that goal too. Because, you know, there's a reason I'm not a pipe fitter anymore. I wanted more out of my career. So I found a spot here at Vega to take it a little bit further. And this is just another way in my mind for me to kind of grow that career into a different market. Because if I, like, if I really talk truly about where I came from, I grew up as a kid working in my garage with my dad. Like that's how we lived and that's what I was used to. So I got into pipe fitting because it made sense. Um, and I've always been trying to kind of strive to move forward. So that's kind of how I climbed through the ranks. And then that's how I found my spot here. And hopefully I can just continue to keep doing that. And we can have tattooed blue collar guys running companies and stuff instead of just working in the trenches. So give us a preview of what's to come now that this is part of the actual assignment. You know, do you can you preview any uh, any fun ideas that are on the horizon here? Absolutely. So I'm going to be more in touch with our YouTube channel. Um, we're going to be more in touch with LinkedIn. I'll still be all over Instagram and there's actually going to be a more set rate to it. So where it was, I've just been flying by the seat of my pants, you know, I, in between trainings or whatever, I grab some stuff. I'm like, I'm going to show off the extended coupling. You know, I'm going to do that real quick. Um, whereas now I'm actually going to block time out during my week to create uh, specified content for the different platforms. Uh, so it's very structural and we give people what they want when they need it. And it makes a little bit more sense than me kind of flying off the rails. We'll still get to do that on the Instagram for Viking Pipe Fitter. Viking Pipe Fitter will always be what it is. It's just me kind of being who I am, doing my thing, but I'll also be making content that's very specifically for Vega so that they can show off those products that, you know, we're trying to get out there into the field for them. We also just started the TikTok. So I've always had a TikTok, Viking Pipe Fitter on there too. Um, but Vega just launched there. There's only one post on it. So that's another spot, another area that I'm going to try to help Vega grow as well. So your, your content is really good. And that's where I first noticed you. I'm kind of new to Instagram. Uh, but I, I see the power of what it does for the industry. And I always loved your content. And as a Viking fan, as I said earlier, your, your logos, your, your imagery is really cool. So I, I got to commend you, your content, the way you do your stuff is, is really good with the videos flashing in and out with the swag. How did you learn to do that? I was, I'm pretty impressed with that. You know, so uh, people don't believe this. I didn't even have internet. I'd never had internet or cable in my house until they sent us home to work. So when they sent us home, they're like, you just hook up onto your internet and do your calls and stuff. And I was like, whoa, whoa, whoa. I don't have internet at my house. I never had. So they had to give me a hotspot so I could do training. So this is all very new to me. I never had an Instagram before I started this one like eight months ago. So it's just kind of me learning as I go. Um, the marketing team does help me out. So Becca over there um, does a lot of support and kind of just helps me figure things out. But it's just me playing with it. And 
trying to feel comfortable. I laugh. You go back and look at my first videos and you're like, what the hell is this guy doing? Like, I didn't even know what a reel was. Like, my first post was a reel and it was just like an accident that it was like the right length of time. Like, you want to post a reel? And I was like, sure, why not? <laughs> That's one of the great things about um, social media accounts and, and how they sort of archive your content. I mean, I know for us, if you look back to the first mechanical room, one, it was during COVID as well. So it's from my house and you can, I mean, our respective home offices, right? So he's got a very professional sales director home office. And I have like a grungy guitar studio where I was doing mine from, right? So that's where we started. And essentially it was us two jabbering back and forth. And then a third head when we had an, in, an interview going on, right? To now today, when you what you see i mean you right now are looking at the the raw footage but you you know what it looks like when it's all said and done with the green screen and you know the moving whatever i decided whatever to put decided back to put there that, yeah. we had a, we had a couple of we had oems and some reps in yesterday i set up the room and i had it live on the tv back behind me over that way and they were welcome to uh central therm space news i had them flying through space on the green screen so you know obviously it progresses and it grows and whatnot so uh you know and you, you gotta take it influence and and learn from from your peers and stuff like that which brings me to another question is uh, this is somebody i always we've had we've been very blessed with, with have incredible content creators come on this show uh you know name drop terrence from impetus i talk about him every time he's a big inspiration to me and a personal friend now i'm sure you know him um you know who are your influences maybe even beyond the industry in terms of how you approach the content creation. Yeah, so, uh, gosh, I, I, I hate to sound like conceited and I know I come off that way a lot. So even when I was in the trades, I kind of got like the cocky young kid thing. I try not to pull from what other people do too much. Cause I feel like as soon as you get so focused on what other people are doing, what are you gonna do? You just kind of fall in line with them and you follow their footsteps. So nothing you do is any different. So like, you're just putting out the same thing as anybody else would. Sure. So I just like, I try to make it different every single time. Like I've never made a video twice. If you guys have seen the sticker things, I never do like a sticker post up that is the same twice or use the same audio. I want it to be something completely different every single time. Sure. So I try not to watch other people as much as that sounds horrible because we're on social media and we're all supposed to be social. You know, I glance at this stuff, I watch it, I like it, we comment, we do our things, but I try to like keep myself in my own little world. So whatever I come up with is like my creative juice that was completely separate from what everybody else had. I mean, if you can do that, that's pretty inspiring unto itself because that's, uh, you know, that sort of font of creativity, it, you know, not everybody's blessed with that. Um, and, you know, I, you know, I personally, know that there are people that are out there that are you know superior to what i'm doing so I, I definitely try to like look and see and not necessarily copy but check out the approach capabilities you know even look at yeah capabilities what you know angles of of where the phone is at what time you know that kind of that kind of stuff uh, and you know so so like pre-production post-production and the actual video itself is always something that i'm i'm personally very very interested in as i do a lot of the production stuff as well as the actual on-camera stuff, you know. So I'm always fascinated by that sort of, so by by how people approach, right? And yeah. I mean, and, you know, like for example, somebody like George the Plumber, who you might be familiar with as well. He's somebody who, I mean, some of the stuff that it does is extremely simple, but it just it, it takes the foresight to set the camera up at the right time and leave it for whatever it is, an hour and 45 minutes, while he does the work that then becomes like a super speed like post of thing. You know what I mean? I mean that that's commitment and foresight and 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 uh, you know sort of understanding and, and prep work and all that sort of stuff. So I mean you know I, I I will definitely take the opposite approach and rob content, rob thoughts, rob angles, that kind of stuff, and think about you know the way other people approach it and stuff. But you know I mean, ultimately like I would love to be able to sort of just blaze the trail and uh, you know and come up with all kinds of new stuff on my own. But you know we're not all as blessed as you, sir. Well, you know, and like, I do love what George does and a lot of these guys who are, you know, it's crazy to say, but they're actually in the field installing and making content True. out of it. I think that's why mine's so different. You know, I'm not actually in the field. I'm setting up a situation. I'm creating a situation. I'm making sure there's a leak in a pipe that I can fix in my shop, whereas they're actually going and doing work. And I've done that a couple of times. I still do all kinds of side jobs and stuff. And it's so hard to think about that. Like, I just want to go and work. Yeah. And it's hard to think like, oh, I'm going to put my camera in this corner and it's going to catch me cutting this piece and doing this and that. So I commend them on that. Um, I just have to be different in it because I'm in a 
you know, it's a different role. Like it sounds crazy, but everything I do is a setup other than my stuff that I do when I'm in the field, like it's a setup, I'm getting something ready to be what it's going to be. So it's a different type of thinking, like what situation can I create today to show off something that would be a solution to that. And the two guys that you mentioned, Matthew, George, uh, George the plumber and impetus. I mean, it, it, I think that they very creatively look at every you know, job that they're on, try to figure that out. Yeah. And I think it's by design and the discipline to do that day in, day out, you know, hats off oh. to them. They're creating great content, doing a lot of education in what they do. I watch it to learn stuff. You know, I'm not a plumber. Uh, I had to change a faucet out this past weekend. And it's like, hey, you know, I remember when these guys were doing this particular thing. I had a little bit of guidance. But the discipline of setting up and preparing, you know, while they're on the job, it's, it's great. Yeah, it's like, well, I mean, so so he's in the van. All these guys are, I mean, uh, you know, as we mentioned, these guys, they're, all their content largely is, you know, at the job site, let's say. Um, and so so imagine, you know, you're, you got your truck, you got your, you know, your rigid tools, you got your, your pro, you got all your, you got everything that you need to do the actual work. Oh, and I got a tripod, and I got this camera, and I got all this other shit. I got, I got, I got, I got a, I got a ring light with me. You know, it's you know all this other stuff is crazy to think about too. So, so you know, people like you get to control that environment a little bit easier, which makes you know, which makes flipping it on um, a little bit, uh, you know, sort of simpler, and and allows for a little bit more freedom of um, creativity a bit because you uh, you are pulling all of the strings as opposed to trying to fit like a Joby. Uh, you know, in the corner of the room to get this as you drag the equipment into the, you know, uh, I'm always fascinated by all the different stuff. And actually, you know, it's crazy to think that that we're doing like a social media HVAC style, you know, 10, 12 years ago, 15 years ago, when, when at, at the birth of Facebook and Instagram and stuff, you know, you would never think that there would be such content coming out of HVAC, hydronics, plumbing and all that sort of stuff. So really hats off to you and folks like that, all the different angles, advancing the industry with this type of content which is you know entertaining and informative and you know i mean and everything in between right so in your bio it says comedic content on instagram as well and you are funny um you know as i think you kind of have to be in order to sort of get an um an, an audience to create right? the interest to come back and check you out yeah so so tell us some funny stories like what's happened accidents you know camera falling over i mean you're doing this a lot so tell it tell us something funny that's happened yeah so <laughs> I do a lot of it and a lot of it's like forced comedic. I'm going to try to make it funny. Um, we've had a couple things like I was filming with Becca the other day and we wanted this like super nice close up shot of like ream in the pipe and like the, the little curly cues coming off there. And literally mid shot, the reamer broke and I slapped the camera out of her hand, almost hit her in the face. But you see the camera like fall on the ground. We're both like kind of like smiling like, oh man, that was a close one. But that kind of stuff happens all the time. I use a lot of like water in my stuff. So I'll be like spraying my cameras with water or like dropping my phone in a bucket of water and stuff like that almost on a daily basis. So it's kind of cool, but also I have all these resources. So, you know, I can't not talk about Vega and a lot of this comes from them. So they supply all the fittings. They supply me this studio. It's their camera setup. They have the phone because it's my work phone that I use for all this. So they really support it. Um, so I think that's kind of why it became one of the goals, but you know, I, I think it's funny when people are like, oh, you're funny. And then they ask you to be funny, right? It's now kind of what always happens. You're like, oh, uh, well, I don't really have a joke lined up or anything. So no, you're, kind of you're improv improv guy. Spot, you're, sure. thinking on your feet is, is sort of critical to the type of stuff that you do, because you're obviously not writing a script now. You are sort of narrating as it happens, because and that gives an authenticity to the content as well, uh, which is something that is like one of your great strengths, I think. Uh, so something that makes your content kind of amazing. Um, so out of left field, you mentioned Becca beforehand. So I was chatting with her, you know, in the, in the Instagram DM just a minute ago. I was like, well, what should I ask this guy? Just without, so she said, and I thought this would be kind of hilarious. And this has nothing to do with plumbing. Um, more like philosophically, you know, feats of strength. Um, would you rather fight a horse sized duck or a hundred duck sized horses? <laughs> Say that oh, again. <laughs> so I as of, you know, you're, you've got your war hammer and you're on the Viking battlefield. And would you rather your opponent be a duck that is the size of a horse or an army of horse-sized ducks? 
or duck sized uh, horses. Duck sized horses. Oh, duck sized horses for sure. Have you guys ever messed with like a goose or like a big bird? Those things are nasty animals. <laughs> I wouldn't want to mess with a big bird. If you think about dinosaurs, were big birds. So I'm not trying to mess with a, a goose or a duck that's the size of a horse. I'd rather kick around some little mini horses for sure. Especially if you're wielding wielding the uh, you know the, the hammer of Thor, you can probably yeah, yeah. like kind of just sweep them out of the way pretty good, I guess. You know, I was talking about that with Alex before she before she left my uh, market. That very same question. I did. I, I asked her. She's like five foot nothing, like like ninety two pounds, and she picked the, the duck that's the size of the horse. And I was like, I don't know, girl. I don't know about that. One. I mean, that's that's a. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> the ducks are nice. decision for sure. She's obviously never messed with any big birds. They're scary. As hell. That is a question I would have never thought that I would hear in a podcast. Well, that's compliments of Vega Marketing Maven Miss Beck. So, Absolutely. and uh, she's uh, you know she's hilarious, and we've been kind of going back and forth, and she she does a great job uh, for you guys as well. So, how closely you guys work to, like together pretty often, yeah? So we work together pretty often. Um, obviously we're in different uh, settings and different roles. So a lot of times I'll just kind of make a bunch of content, uh, make stuff that I think is gonna work. And then I just kind of give it to her and I'm like, choose what you want, do what you want with it, um, make that work for you. But if we have like a more intensive shot and she wants something specific for Vega, sometimes she'll come over and we can like actually film things and make sure they're lined up the way they're supposed to be and stuff like that. But really, you know, she's our she's our social media and PR um, manager. So that's what she does: is PR and social. The social media that's Vega, that's her baby. She runs all that. You know, I'm just kind of a supplement to all that area. So Star, people are like, oh, you're like the Vega guy and all that. I'm like, I'm part of it. I'm part of this, you know, this giant team, and I just kind of try to add to that when I can. It's it's nice when you can have uh, synergy between the different roles. I would be, you know, roundly shocked. If she wasn't absolutely grateful for for what you provide to her, that she, that she can then use in a wider, uh, you know, wider respect and on the different platforms and stuff like that. I mean, it's a vital, uh, vital service you're providing. Um, and, and, putting and, you in know, the uh, arrows into the quiver. That's it. For her to fire. Absolutely. That I... We're uh, we're in the process of building out the marketing department right here. So something like that, you know, help help with content and stuff would be something that would be amazing. It's a, it's a lot of looking at me for blessing now. <laughs> Thank you. So, uh, what? So you know what? The social media stuff and the the videos are you know obviously kind of off the cuff. I mean specifically the Instagram stuff. So tell a little bit about the process when you're doing like more like formal training. So I, I have mean, to actually let me dovetail on the top of that. There are two things that I've seen in your in your videos, and not as a pipe fitter, I don't know. You know the answer to it but i it's on my list of questions is when you mark the pipe before you press it what is the relevance of that and the other one is and i've seen some of these guys on instagram that do not do this but when they finish a press you mentioned colton that you have to do a little bit of a twist why would you do just getting some tools yeah that's good we've why, had a live demonstration why do you do that time. twist not everybody does it yeah, yeah. So there's a couple things that come with it. So we're talking about Pro Press and Mega Press. Pro Press is copper tube size. Mega Press is iron pipe size. So we're talking like domestic systems, heating systems, compressed air, and then we're moving into like gas, steam, stuff like that with that Mega Press. Now when we're talking about a fitting, and we mark that full insertion depth to answer the first question. What we want is the fitting all the way on when we make the press. If the fitting's not all the way on when we make the press, the sealing on what's inside of there, it could be where it's not really sitting on the pipe where we want it to be. So that whole mark in the full insertion depth is to make sure that that fitting is all the way on. It's the only way to visually identify that we're actually all the way on when we press. So that's kind of that basic premise there. Now the twist, you're talking about twisting the tool forwards and backwards after you make the press, like you put it on yes. there, you make that press and you rotate it. Not everybody does it. What, why do you do it and what happens if you don't? So a couple of things that come with that. So it's not, necessary you don't have to do that to complete the press but when you do complete a press you guys can probably see there's that little sharp edge right there on that fitting sure yes. that's because that's where the jaws come together so when they compress they squeeze the copper out that side and you get a sharp edge it does two things it kind of makes the jaw lock on the fitting and you have to worry about cutting your finger so the whole idea with that is after i make my press if i rotate my tool forwards and backwards it knocks wow. off that sharp edge and releases the jaw so it's really just a guy in the field thing. Like, do you want an easier day? Do you want to cut your finger? 
rotate the tool and you don't have to worry about it. So I try to put that out there. Much better way to do it. Yeah, it's one of the few things that people don't know about that you've been doing. You're doing it right. It's just an extra step to take you up to that next level, basically. Okay. That's uh, those are the kind of tips that people, I mean, I think look for, right? I would be shocked if there is probably something not, you know, I mean, it's probably like a quick 30 second, like pro press tips and tricks thing out on, on, on his uh, platform that says, this is why you do that. Or turn you, at the end. Do you want to cut yourself? The answer is no, do it a little extra, you know, and, there, and off you go. There's a little rhyming, you know, things. <laughs> so that's, that's like a snippet of what a training would be. Obviously we do like virtual trainings and in person. Typical virtual training is like half an hour to an hour. So I teach them everything they could ever want to know about pro press or mega press or a little bit of both, depending on their level. So it's really cool that we can kind of choose what they need. So if I meet a guy and he's like, dude, I've been pressing for 10 years, I go real deep into the weeds and I hit him with all the things that he might not know about the product. If I'm talking with a customer who's like, hey, this is the first day I'm pressing, I'm like, okay, we're starting at the very basics. I'm going to teach you pipe prep, where you can use the fitting, and kind of get them off on the right foot. So they're very specialized trainings to what people need, which is really special. So, so we have a very tactile product also, right? I mean, it's literally something that it's so critical to feel it and feel it go together and stuff like that. And I got to imagine something like pipe fitting is, is almost exactly. I mean, we, we're a plastic pipe fitting, essentially. You don't need to press exactly, but it's the same kind of deal. When, when, with our stuff that goes together. I mean, how effective is virtual training? And do you ever have people on the other side who, who have those tools and are actually like playing along at home? So there's a couple ways the training is set up. Most of the time we set up a training, our district manager who's local in their region sets up the training. So sometimes he might actually be there with them with tools and product to show them. So as that's we a go bit of a hybrid it. model then. Yes, absolutely. Um, so we just bring in another level because obviously I've been pipe fitting my entire life. So I bring in that level of like experience that the DM might not have. But then other times it is, it's just straight virtual. They're set up in their shop, our DMs on his computer at his house, and I'm here. And it, I can't say that it doesn't lose something. It, it definitely loses something when you can't touch it and feel it and mess with it. But we've done a really good job of making these trainings uh, very effective virtually. We've been doing it for two years and we just continually step up the game. So if you watch my first virtual trainings, there's no pegboard behind me. There's no pipe rack above. There's nothing to show the real life situations. And just kind of through doing it, we've been like, I need this set up and I need to have this set up. And I need to have this over here so I can talk about this. The other cool thing is I have anything they could ever want to see. I've got every DeWalt, Hilti, Rigid, Milwaukee, and Vega tool that can press a fitting in the shop. So if they want to talk about something like that, boom, I pick up a tool, I pick up a fitting, I have exactly what they're talking about. So in some ways, the virtual is more capable than we were with in-person trainings out in the field before. Are all tools, all press tools created equal? You know, um, I won't ask you for your favorite because I don't, want, I don't want to put you on the spot, but are they all equal? So all press tools will turn off the same amount of force. Um, some have different capabilities. So it really comes down to like, what kind of capabilities do you need? A compact tool, which is like a smaller tool that fits in tighter spots. Um, Hilti make one, uh, Milt, uh, Milwaukee, Rigid makes one. So does Vega. They go up to inch and a quarter on copper and one inch, one inch in steel. So very capable in smaller situations. Go up to a standard platform, which is like your Rigid 350, 340, Milwaukee M18. Um, your Hilti and your DeWalt, they go up to two inch on steel and four inch on copper. And then boom, there's an XL tool or a booster that takes you into that two and a half, three and four inch on those larger size fittings. So it kind of comes down to like, what battery platform do you like? What kind of tool do you like to work with? I'm, I don't have any fear in saying it. We can say what we like. I like rigid tools, you know? I just like the way they work in the press world. Um, and most of my like battery oper operated tools, drills and stuff like that, I use Milwaukee, but that's just my personal preference. We don't care what you press with, just make sure you press Vega is kind of the big idea there. Yeah, yeah. Well that's, a, that's a nice slogan. I like well it. Said. <laughs> that's funny. <laughs> I have another question. Uh, you got, you're part of the on-site training as well. Have you ever uh, done a, we had some training yesterday. Uh, we had a couple of new reps uh, that came to town and we did an onboarding and some training. We didn't video it. I was thinking about this last night. Have you ever done any posts it with, you know, live attendees, if you will, versus you do a lot of, you know, one-on-one -on -one where you're talking through what you're doing and why. Have you ever done any posts with, the, you know, the class that's in session, whether where there's people in the room? 
you know, we're getting a little bit closer with that. We're getting better with it. So it's been nice for me to work with marketing and also have other trainers here in the building. So I did like a group that was here at like 530 at night. It was a group of apprentices. And I had one of the other trainers, Adam, at least take some pictures and videos and stuff kind of while it was going on. But it's hard to get that like specific post until you've trained that person. So like if I had Adam tuned in and I was like, hey, dude, at this part, I need you to like zoom in and get here and catch me saying this, that kind of ups that level. But you know how it goes. If somebody's taking a picture in the corner of the room, you can bit and piece some pictures together to kind of give the effect. But it's not that same kind of like fun post that you're going to get out of it. You know what I mean? I do. Certainly. I mean, it's something that I've considered some of the live, uh, you know, elements or filming and stuff. But uh, I mean, there tends to be a lot of digressions, incursions. Right. And I mean, in person is hard to there's a lot of variables that that, that are at play as well. Some people are not as good, uh, you know, on camera they or they don't want to be sure. or, you know, I mean, there's a lot. Of, I mean, there's a lot that can go into it. And and as Colton mentioned, I mean, he's talking about the way, the way he described what he was looking for is literally how you film a TV show. So the pre-production that would go into making that really good is like a ballet or a TV show. You know, you got to this is where I need you to zoom in. This is a critical element of a statement that I'm going to make. Like, you better like make sure it's on me and not, and not on the you know the dumbfounded people in the crowd who are like playing on their phone, perhaps or whatever you know whatever it is, right? So there's a lot to it. And I mean, you know, as I mentioned, I do a lot of the, the pre and post production. So there's a lot that goes into that stuff. And for it to go flawlessly is hard, hard to do. And nobody who's in the in the training is going to be like, you know what? Mm, cut. Let's take that from uh you know from QB again. And uh, yeah. let's restart it. You know, can you can you laugh again like that? That was really good. Um, <laughs> really hard to do. Really hard to do. I mean, I haven't seen um, stuff done that well. Like, like we we use a, one of our reps as a sort of a product training thing, but it was a it's a, it's a but it's a COVID training, right? It's a guy in a room by himself, and he's doing a good job with with the product training. The, the variable elements are not there there is a guy on the side of the screen in his little camera who, little thumbnail. who was clearly falling asleep but that's a whole other story <laughs> i always oh. hate to get on that part of that video yeah. you're not really, i was really killing that training i only put one guy to sleep so it must have been super awesome right <laughs> so is this room that you're in right now your your main domain when you're on site yeah absolutely so if we kind of back this camera up here um you can kind of see what the room entails so it's like it's my entire training room here over here is like my computer set up this is like the home board that i run everything from um and then i kind of do the training throughout here i've got cameras set up off to the side i've got three different camera angles that will kind of like pull you around the room and when i need to come over here and get into a fitting i change that camera angle we zoom in on the fitting we can talk about deflection and whatnot and kind of move in that direction and then like i was talking about with this pipe rack up above here so this pipe rack you can see above the camera, I'll actually install pipe and hangers. And I've got like hangers set up so I can actually do like a real life installation. I can put in hangers and I can talk about deflection in like real life scenarios instead of being like, if this happens, try this. Like, this is exactly how it goes. This is what you're gonna do. And that's why we're doing these trainings that way. So, so that room is badass, And uh, I'm a little jealous, I must say. When you're doing different cameras, are you using a switcher yourself or do you, are you do you have somebody who's running like obs with you or or how are you how are you producing that stuff with both the cameras because i need to know because i want to do that so as of right now we run through teams i have different cameras set up and i just switch it in teams so i pop into my teams i open up the device settings and i choose the camera that's set up for that pipe setting so there's a um, lot of post that goes on then. So so that, that you edit afterwards because there's obviously dead time while you're switching devices. Yeah. So for the trainings, it's all live. So they see me. I'm like, all right, I'm gonna pop my camera over. My camera swaps, and I show up. I walk into the other one. My posts and stuff, everything I do is from my phone. I do everything on Instagram is all shot through my phone. So I just put my phone in a tripod, move it around, go into some kind of editing service. I use DJ. DJ Nemo and like cap cut for most of my editing, slap that all together, speed things up, do whatever I got to do. And then I get that into a post, but the virtual trainings, it's all live. So, I mean, they get to see me screw up. Like sometimes I'll like cut a fitting and there's pressure behind it. And I like forgot I pressurized it. Water will spray me in the face or something. <laughs> I'm like, oh. I'm like, there you go. Like this is live. This is how this goes. <laughs> 
that's amazing. And there is a bit, there is something to be said about um, the, I don't want to say roughness of that, but the the real the realism of of moving around. It's clearly not staged. It's clearly you and you being you know charismatic and funny, make it sort of seamless, even if it's not necessarily seamless. And that re that resonates with an audience much more so than plastic, phony, prepackaged, and all that sort of stuff. Oh, it better be. So I think that's something that like, I'll die on that hill all day. Like if like a couple times it's been like I've been told um, by different people, not even people here at Vega, like you need to be more professional. You need to set things up this way. And I'm like, no, that kills the whole vibe. That kills it everything. Ruins that I'm going the authenticity for. of what you do. Yeah, That's so if, if you guys see my yeah, stuff, then one shot, like, yeah. I don't go back and I don't ever have a script. I never go back and like change things. I go ahead, I turn the camera on to video, I film myself, do my thing, and I go back and I edit it. So you'll see me make like flubs and mess up my words and step over myself. And I'm like, dude, this is real life. Like people don't want to see me with some perfect production quality type video, especially not my customers. We're talking about guys out in the field right. and they want to see some pretty boy putting pipe together perfectly. Like, I'm going to screw stuff up and they're going to love it. So it works out really well. And that's why I, I'm the marketing guy behind the scenes sort of thing. Here. The pretty boy. I, I don't know how to do any of the pressing or any of that sort of stuff. It would be too polished. It would be not, it'd be inauthentic. It'd be like, get this piano player the hell away from these, these rigid tools. <laughs> you can't even lift that thing. So a uh, question, you do some pretty cool stuff. I mean, your job is pretty diverse, pretty cool. What's your favorite element of your job? Because you do, it, it's you know, from training to video to social media. What's your favorite piece? You know, if it, like, if it has to come down to like a core thing, it's like interacting with my people, as cheesy as that sounds. Like I do this for guys in the field. So I grew up in the trades. Everybody treats you like trash. Everybody thinks you don't make good money. You get traded like a, treated like a second rate citizen. So I like connecting with my people, showing them that they're not second rate sittings, uh, citizens and that like plumbing and pipe fitting is like a super cool, lucrative career. So it's huge right now that we need people to do trade work. So I'm trying to connect with young human beings that are not only smart, um, but have like a love and a passion for what they do because we need it so desperately and we need to make that you know, This is a, a common thread that we are noticing with uh, especially, you know, you, your generation, I, I'm guessing that you're either, you, close to my age or a little younger than me. And, uh, you know, th this is a theme that we are hearing over and over and over. And there, there are, you know, organizations like Party, and we mentioned Terrence before. These are, you know, your sentiments are being echoed across this industry by uh, the next generation of business leaders and, and influencers and decision makers and stuff like that. So it's really setting up, uh, you know, a really positive atmosphere for the next generation of technicians or the current generation of technicians, right? I mean, it's uh, it's pretty inspiring and, um, you know, you are a good advocate for that sort of stuff and clearly doing what you do with, with the authenticity that you have is, is certainly helping to advance that, uh, you know, that goal. So, you know, good, good on you. Congratulations. Keep it up and all that sort of stuff. We'll, we'll of course be watching uh, as it goes on. There's, stuff. So there's maybe even a story. I don't think we told the story on, on the podcast, maybe, but we recently did a marketing event. It was the central therm squid games. It was a bunch of social media guys <laughs> on there, you know, guys that are respected in the industry true craftsmen tell them the story about so us we're coming back into the hotel yeah with a flock of these guys and what happened so we're sitting in south beach miami um having a nice like mai tai or something like that with uh you know the heavily tattooed industry luminaries that were down there with us uh the aforementioned people were all down there george and terrence and omar the plumber and uh, you know, Aaron Bond, and, and you know, and, and many, many, many other guys, Michael Flynn and Jeff uh, Dem, HVAC, all people that you, you've seen that because they're just all over the industry. And we're sitting at the bar and this dude, just some kid, like really a kid. He was probably like, you know, mid early 20s, I, I would guess. He's sitting at the bar with his girlfriend. He's just on vacation. He's from London, Ontario. And he's looking around and he goes like, he comes over to us. I think that's Michael Flynn. You know, I, like, I think that's Flintstone. Like he, he was, he's an, he was either an apprentice or a, or a very like new to the industry guy. And he recognized these people, like you're walking around and you say, oh, that's, that's Giannis, you know, or like, that's an NBA guy, you know, and it, it, he, 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 
I can't. I, I'm not even going to attempt it. We, we met this Giannis guy, the Greek oh, guy, sure. the Bucks guy in the Bahamas. That's a whole other story. I don't know if you're a basketball guy. I'm certainly not. I don't know who the hell he was. Just some tall dude. Um, but um, <laughs> unlike me not knowing who the NBA guy was, um, this dude was like, I know – I think I know all so of all shit. of these people. I know these guys. Yeah, and, guys. and you know, to to that point, he, he is now following in the footsteps of of those folks, people like you, who are you know creating a new way to look at things like pipe fitting, things like hydronic installation, and and you know service technicians and and, and all of that sort of stuff. So that was a fascinating event down there. Just I mean, or like that little slice of the event was was really sort of eye opening unto itself. Those were legitimate celebrities. You are a celebrity unto yourself in this industry, you know. So it, it's and you and you are kind of like a force, a force for good. You're making an impact. Because here we are in the middle of nowhere with our own little event, and this middle, kid. Well, South Beach is in the middle of nowhere, well, but you know. <laughs> but it, who would have expected all these people in one place in South? Certainly. Who recognizes all these people? He's like, holy shit! I follow these guys. These guys are teaching me through Instagram. Yeah, absolutely. And here we are all together. Indeed, indeed. So uh, we've ta- we've taken up a lot of your time. So let's uh, let's close on some lighter note stuff. Colton, the man. What do you like to do outside of pipe fitting? What kind of music do you listen to? What do you do with your spare time? You know, et cetera, et cetera. And uh, you know, just give us a little bit more. Fill out the profile of of, of who you are beyond uh, underscore pipe fitter. Absolutely. So um, I have a beautiful wife, uh, Audrey Miller. Um, I've been with her since we were 18. So I've been with her for a very long time. Uh, So we're super happily married. Uh, No kids. I got two dogs and three cats. Um, Had cats forever. I love them. I'm not scared to be a cat guy. Uh, The dogs are awesome. We like to hike, uh, paddle board. We're typical Coloradans. We just like get out, do stuff outdoors. Um, We got a house that's Semi new. This is the second house we've been in that we've been fixing up. So I work on the house quite often. Uh, music. I'm a typical like I'm. Yeah, I'll tell you guys. I'm a millennial. I'm only 30 years old. Uh, 32, I guess now. Um, so 90s hip hop is my kind of music because that's what I grew up with. I have brothers 10 years older than me, so that just kind of got smashed into me and it just got forced on me, and now I love it. And that's kind of what I'm into for sure. So. Outdoors, um, doing things like that. I just build things. I feel like I'm artistic. I'm a, kind of a dorky guy. Like me and my wife do craft projects and she knits and we do like things like that. So I like using that creative side. I think it's something that people miss out on. They get into this kind of industry and you just work and beat yourself to hell and you're used to doing a sp- specified thing. And I think doing something that's real creative and outside uh, just kind of widens up your mind. So it gives you another, you know, another feather in your hat, something else that you're capable of doing. Amazing. And then, and in between you sit in the tattoo chair. I sit in the tattoo chair. I'm there as much as I possibly can be as much as money and time will allow. I'm getting tattooed. Understood. Yeah. Me, you and me both, sir. Uh, <laughs> well, Colton can't thank you enough for joining us. This has been great. What well, I mean, these interviews just keep getting better and better. And it's in large part to guests like you who are informed, inspiring, entertaining and everything in between. So thank you so much, man. Um, that center therm swag that we sent you. Throw a shirt on one of those dogs and send me that picture, man. We're doing pipes and pets. I want to see it. So, Dude, uh, I totally will. You got to check out this, too. I had to build I had to build a stand for all the swag because you guys gave me so much swag. I had to build a mega <laughs> coat rack. So now Fantastic. I got a rack. All the center term stuff's in here, too. So yeah, we're all wow, set up. If you guys send me stuff and you want me to do something for you, Boom, I'll put it in the rack. And now if I do a center therm video, I just come over here and choose my favorite center therm shirt and I'm set up and ready to rock. Say what's up to that guy right over there. Who's, the same shirt who's walking guy. around? Yell at This him. is another trainer. So this is Adam. He does the same thing I do. Um, he's been with us for like two months doing training. So this is Adam. He works at Vegan too. I want to see the back of that shirt. Oh, <laughs> uh, look at that. So we got uh, all the Vegas swag. What up, Adam? Thank you for joining us briefly there on yeah. the uh, on the mechanical room. Um, it's uh, maybe we'll get him down the line there when uh, when he's got an equal amount of tattoos as you. Yeah, when he gets his tattoos, you guys can have him on. <laughs> Thank you, Colton. We will talk to you All soon. Right. Thank you so much for joining us, man. We will uh we'll be in touch. I appreciate Thanks y'all. Thank time, you. Man. All right, catch you later. Peace. We are back. Uh to close up the panel. Another great, great episode. I think we get better every time we do it. I I fully agree. Um, 
really a hats off to uh, the guy who books this show, which is both of us, really. So, uh, because we're having some really incred incredible guests on here. We have this year, not to say that our guests last year were not great, but man, four in a row were home runs, I think. Yeah, I mean, we've had we've been very, very lucky throughout the entire run of this. So, this is episode 16 now, I want to say there was 12. We did we did one per month last year. We are on pace right now as one per month this year. I would like to increase that eventually when, when we have the, the audience and it makes sense. Uh, but for now, one per month, because we are really keeping it at a very, very high level with the, the, the guests that we have. And I mean, it is a lot of work to put this together and to sit here and then edit it and put it out there, promote it and all that sort of stuff. So we're, we're keeping it at that for now with the hope that it grows enough that, that there is a clamoring audience that desires so much mechanical room that we must deliver and not one a month is not enough. Right. Not none of this uh, four week lead time on on mechanical room content. We want to we want to cut that down. Maybe ten day lead time, yes. something like that. Hey, you know who we met yesterday? Just uh, off the rails here. We, we, we oh. Anonymous Joe in the house can, yesterday. Can we say that we know who Anonymous Joe is? We can keep him. We can remain anonymous. Can remain anonymous. But, but we know he de anonymized himself. Can we tell yesterday. him what he drives? What is that mean? giving away too much of a secret? You mean like his motorcycle? Or whatever? Yeah. Oh. Type of motorcycle. Not oh, 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 motorcycle. right, right. Oh, I'm sorry. That's right. He's the Vespa guy, right? He had anonymous Joe has a candy apple red Vespa. <laughs> so to be clear, just so you guys know, anonymous Joe is a is a sort of a folkloric if you hero don't know who, he is, yes. who is a part of the HVAC Jerks podcast, which Michael and I have both been on. Yep. And uh, you know, we do work very directly with Rich uh, from uh, WMS Sales, who, who is, is not anonymous. One of the jerks, yes, he is not anonymous. Um, I just had lunch with him the other day. I, I he was clear as day, no masks, no nothing, no voice changer, or any of that. It was him. He so was there. anonymous. Joe wears a mask even pre-COVID. He did. He was uh, blazing the trail of anonymity yes. uh, prior to you know masking up and whatnot. So yes, we, we had anonymous Joe in the house, yes. and he confessed. He and confessed. shows up. But he waited to the very end. He had interviewed us on the show, <laughs> and he waited till the point where he was exiting the building when he told us who he was, which that was a good touch. It, it was really funny. It's it's a it's a true showman right there. Yes. Who you know there was a little bit of drama, and then it was like boom boom, and we're out of here. And then like right he's there. like, wait, you're Joe, and before he already peeled out on the Vespa before we could even ask a follow up question. He was tearing down Pearl Street on that candy apple red Vespa before we had a chance to, to even like like process what he had said. I know. Now I have all these other questions which I, would, which I wish I would have asked him. I'm gonna call Rich right now. We gotta, we gotta get the load out of this anonymous guy. It was uh, not that anonymous anymore. We'll remain anonymous for, for the purposes of the mechanical room, but we know who he is. Right. He's been uh, in the building. I gave him a Central Therm t-shirt. So if you see him out there, you can say, if you, a guy had a Central Therm t-shirt on a Vespa, then you you know who that is. So you're not that anonymous anymore. So, but uh, yeah, shout out. A picture of him on the Vespa with a mask. I'm texting Truthful. We gotta find that. We gotta have that one. I want to put that in the next month's uh, podcast. Oh, episode. that's so, Yeah, that's uh, there's obviously a lot going on here at Central Third. Man, we had uh, we had New Mexico reps here yesterday. We had Arizona reps here yesterday. We had uh, some OEM folks who are, will remain anonymous because that's that's where Anonymous Man was was a part of. Uh, man, we had Burned. Mr. Bern Powlick was in the house this week. He's CEO. Uh, he's the president of the board of directors of Centro, or the, the building product division of Centro Tech, yes. which is the big daddy corporation. Cent I think Centro Tech Industries. Is that right? Or is it, they, they, they were Centro Tech Sustainable AG for a while. Oh, yeah, while. Centro oh, Tech and, uh, Industries. Now. Anyways, much, much bigger than, mm, you know, very high up compared to so where we are here on the mechanical. Right. Right. So, a lot of uh, exciting news. So much going on here. Uh, you know, we're gonna we're gonna have some mechanical room shorts coming up here because we're gonna, we want to introduce you to Austin Rivera, Central Therm's new product manager, and TJ Cullington. Uh, is it so? Cullington. Um, he uh, he's our new director of ops. So we're gonna have some little short fight introductions with some of our uh, new personnel here because it's a, you know sort of an exciting time at Central Therm, and we don't really make this about the company, and those won't really exactly be about the company either. Just so happens we have some really interesting new blood here at the Albany factory, and we really do want everybody to know, um, you know, who these guys are and what what they do here, how they're going to help, uh, you know, our throughout throughout the channel. The future for, of our company. Yes, indeed, indeed, indeed. So, so that's pretty exciting. Look for those uh, little short bits. I want to keep those to about you know five minute digestible introductions, uh, so that everybody can say, hey, that's awesome. Hey, that's DJ. He works for Central Therm. He's doing a hell of a job. And all that kind of stuff so uh, time will tell on that 
Um, so <laughs> we'll figure out a way to make that. <laughs> so that's it for April. Uh, was Happy uh, spring break next week. Indeed, indeed. Uh, we'll, we'll be greetings. We'll have some, uh, check out the Center Therm Instagram next week. Uh, you'll be seeing uh, the sales director sunk into the uh, the ball pit thing, or not the ball pit, the uh, the water tank. What do you call that? Dunk water, tank. Dunk water tank. Be warm. So That's all I gotta say, warm yeah. water. Terry said that she is also getting dunked. Terry is uh, the marketing director for Blue Hawk, and she will also be up there. So I will also throw and sink her too. I'm, I used to pitch in high school. I will be able to hit these targets, no doubt about it. There, there is no, there is no doubt. So uh, Matthew volunteered <laughs> me to be the, the dunk e in a dunk tank. Yes. I didn't know that you were. I, I, yeah. uh, I got it. you. You. Uh, there's no doubt I will hit that target. If, uh, given I choice. will be so abusive. In my uh, harassment, you will not be the first rate. So we're gonna we're gonna, I'm gonna avoid that dunk tank. So at Central Therm Ecosystems on Instagram, uh, we will probably do. I think I think it's probably gonna get do it live. Uh, I did buy a pirate costume for the occasion. It's a pirate themed party down down at the Blue Hawk event. So sync the sales director, Mike Sakar. It's a, pi a pirate themed event there, and <laughs> and down you go. So uh, keep it here and keep it on our social channels for more amazing, uh, you know, pipe-related content and all that. And, uh, and as Colton would say, peace. <laughs>